From the studios of Blackwater Media in the city of Atlanta, it's time for a very special edition of the Nightfall Radio Show. As you know, on this program, we like to feature uh, horror fiction, uh, horror poetry, and also horror art. Uh, but I wanted to take <clears throat> an opportunity to come on and uh, introduce a gentleman uh, whose work we will be featuring on the upcoming uh, edition of the show. His name is Mr. James Baxter. And James, are you there? I am here. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, like I said, normally normally uh, I don't have guests on this particular show, but I thought, you know, in this in this instance, you know, since we, we've spoken before, we've done interviews before, so we had a a pre-existing rapport, I thought it would be kind of fun and cool to bring you on because one of your short stories is going to be featured on uh, on an episode that is actually going to air one week from today. Uh, and, of course, we're not going to do anything to as a spoiler uh, for that story, uh, but... Uh, how can we talk about this and not give everything away? Because you 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 sent it in to me, and I like I told you before, I read it, and I and I said, wait a minute, I got to read this again. Yeah, it's uh, uh, it's an interesting story, uh, and I don't know how you can talk about it uh, too detailed without giving it away. And I don't like to give it away because it's it's really a, a story that gives you a twist if you're not ready for it, and. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's I guess I could say that it's, um, you know, my publisher, when I sent it to her um, with study of books uh, and Annette told me that uh, she goes, you sure you want to include this in the anthology? Because it's kind of twisted. <laughs> and uh, I was like, yeah, I do. You know, I kind of push the edge with everything that I write. And um, this certainly um pushes the edge and uh yes, yeah and I, absolutely and i think it's a it's a great tale it's a, you know the thing i like about i write what i call real world horror so the mm -hmm. stuff i write about is is real stuff you know this is not you know some make-believe monster hiding under the bed this is stuff that actually happens and and i think that's what makes it so terrifying absolutely i mean it's it, you know there's a it, it's got the quality of well you know when we think of horror we we generally think strictly in terms of fiction, but this is realistic fiction. Yeah, it's realistic fiction. It's stuff that actually has happened. It's stuff right. that has actually happened recently. And you know, I think that the the thing that um, people don't realize is that horror is really not a genre. Horror, horror, terror is an emotion, a feeling. That is that is brought to you by something that you see or you read or you hear, and so this is something that causes that, and it's so, you know, it's it's again, it's real world. It's not, you know, it's not some make believe monster or some guy it's running. Not to, it's, it's not, it's not fantasy. fantasy. It's not some guy running through the woods with a ski mask. You know, it's this is real. Let me tell you how strongly I agree with you on what you just said about horror not being a genre, and. I came to believe that, number one, because I love writing horror, but number two, I heard a, I heard a person say that very same thing, and this particular individual is a person who would have known almost more than any other person. You know who it was? Who's that? Christopher Lee. Oh, okay. Christopher Lee said, horror is not a genre, it's an effect. Right. And he always said that he considered the films that he did to be fantasy. And the effect was horror. Right, right. And um, I totally agree with that. I think, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, you, you read this, you read this story and, and you realize that, wow, this is, this is something that, <laughs> that really happens. And it's, and that's what makes it so horrifying. That's what brings that terror out is that, oh my God, this happened. So, you know, just to kind of set the scene for uh, the audience, um, we do not just narration because there there are a lot of people on the internet that do narration. But what we do here is actually a a dramatization 
of a piece of fiction. And so we are we're taking it, we're telling the story, we're adding we're adding uh, uh, inflection and emotion into the the narrative. We are adding sound effects to you know every time we do a story we we add sound effects and not those silly cartoony sound effects that you kind of hear on the internet. These are like realistic sound effects that you expect to hear. You know, you to, uh, the jangling of keys, the closing of a door, uh, the sound of footsteps or sounds coming out of the kitchen, the sound of water splashing, all of these things realistically. And so uh, as good as this story is, that added, that added thing that we're going to do to it will bring it more and more alive, make it more and more real. So it's really a digital literary dramatization. Uh, and the story is called The Kiss, and it will air a week from today, so that would be uh, Friday, December the, what, uh, 20, 23rd, the 23rd, so this interview will be going out to the public today, which is December the 16th, so you guys got a week to, you know, let this marinate. Uh, now, you know, tell me about, uh, I know you co-authored the, the revelation. We can tell the folks about that. Well, that was a long time ago, but, uh, 1994, yeah, 1994, uh, um, a college buddy of mine, um, wrote, uh, we started writing one night, uh, a story, um, that was actually going to be a short story for all of our friends and it actually kind of got out of hand and turned into a novel and um <laughs> we you know back in the old days you know you, you we didn't have the internet you know you were you were sending out letters query letters and all we yep. finally found a publisher and got it published but it's an apocalyptic horror story um set in lexington south carolina and all of the characters in the book are friends of ours it was the little clique that we hung out with and and um but it's uh it's an interesting it's an interesting book. If I if I could go back and redo it, I would. I I, I think looking at the things that I've done in my past, I, I look at it as probably one of the worst pieces of writing I've ever done. But um, <laughs> it, you know, but it got published, so I mean, I can't I can't cry about that. But uh, you know, I someone someone told me one time they said, oh yeah, I, I didn't think it was great writing. And you know, honestly, Doctor Lester, I've never considered myself a great writer i've actually had people that, that have read my my recent stuff saying you know that uh, you know you're a great writer i'm not a great writer i think by by writing standards i think i'm marginal or or maybe a little bit better than a mediocre writer i think i'm a great storyteller and i think that that's the difference i think that's what really sells the books is the story because there's a lot of great writers who are not very good storytellers and, right. and they're just not very good books because of that. You know, and, and I have found that that is true. I mean, most writers fall down on one of those two sides. You know, you're either a really, really good writer or you're a really, really good storyteller. And only on rare occasions do you find a person that's both. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and uh, usually those folks are very famous, I think. Um, uh, now, I saw that you... You did a you pub you did a publication. Was this a magazine, a, a horror, a literary magazine, The Raven? You know, The Raven was uh, again back in the the early '90s, but uh, it was a newsletter, if you will, um, mm. a, a a zine. You know, uh, uh, we put together that took submissions from all over the place, and we basically published short stories, horror stories, and poetry. Um, it was right on the um, I guess right on the cusp of the internet starting up. It wasn't even called the internet. It was a World Wide Web. You know? Exactly. And um, so we were able to take submissions from all over the place. And um, but it was a, it was interesting. Um, it, it was just a lot of work, and it was about the same time that my sports business was taking off, and I didn't have the time that it really needed to to be put into it, the time and effort to to make it what I wanted it to be. And um, and to be honest with you, I'm a writer, and I wasn't thrilled with being a publisher. 
you know, or right. an editor. I wanted to write. Uh, but I did enjoy reading the submissions that, that people sent in. Uh, do you remember right around that same time that, the, like, like you said, the, the Internet was on the cusp? Do you remember Scavenger Newsletter? You know, I don't think I remember that. There were so many, though. Do you remember? I mean, there were so many that came out then. Um, but uh, I don't know that I remember Scavenger. There was one called Scavenger's Newsletters, a lady named Janet Fox. And uh, I used to, I actually subscribed to that one. Uh, and it was uh, monthly. And uh, it was a very cool little newsletter. And because I wanted to stay in tune with the horror and sci-fi writing community. And it was a really, to me, it was a really good time because we still were not on the internet 100%. Right. And we were still sending out queries, like you said, sending out self-addressed stamped envelopes and, you know, waiting for six weeks to get a response back, you know. Yeah, it, it was uh, it was crazy. and, and, and it, or, or waiting longer than that. And, and that's not to say, I was telling somebody the other day, I was talking to a young author about how it used to be, and we were talking about uh, rejection. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, you send out, if, if you were any kind of uh, writer that was in pursuit of publication back then, yeah. you sent out hundreds of, of query letters, and yep. which meant you got hundreds of rejections. So you kind of became yeah. immune to the, to the rejections. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I listen. I could wallpaper my kitchen with rejection letters, okay. Uh, and but it was just a part of you. Know, like you said, you don't even after a while you don't take it personally. No, you don't. You don't. I mean, you it, it's it's growth, you know. Yeah, yeah, and um, I, you know, I I don't know, I, I don't know what it's like now to be a a quote young writer coming along um i think the internet i think you know it's it's good or, it's good and bad right i think the internet has opened up a lot of things for a lot of people that have been closed off in the past uh and that's good on the other hand it also allows for a lot of junk what do you think about that i agree with you totally i think um you know one of the the good things about the internet is that it does allow wide exposure for someone to um, to get their work looked at by others. Um, you know, I've got a page um, that I've got out called uh, Bleeding Hearts, Weeping Souls, and um, it's where I put a lot of my poetry and musings, and, and um, it's it has a, a, a great following, and there's some really good people out there doing the same thing. I came across a page the other day by a writer, a poet, um, Nicole Lyons, who, if you ever have a chance to check out her page, you ought to check it out. But um, I've heard of her. Just an amazing, yeah. amazing writer. You know, I've kind of gotten into poetry over the over the last year, and I, I really believe that when you when you write like that, it is you are you are bleeding. P poetry to me is not creative because. It's coming out of you. It's pouring out of you. It, to me, when you when you write poetry, a true poet is bleeding their heart. You know, your it, it, your heart and your soul bleeds, and it turns into words on the paper. So you're not sitting there with a pencil eraser on the temple, thinking about what I'm going to write. It just comes out of you. And um, there's some writers like that out there that I've found that I'm re really been impressed with. But as you said, there's also a lot of junk out there. Yeah, there's a lot of junk, and and. Um, I'm, I, I, I tend to lean towards, uh, I, I like where we are now, uh, in terms of for people who are creative people, um, uh, there was a time when just so many things were shut off to you because, you know, you didn't have access to a New York literary agent. Or, you know, you didn't have all the time in the world and maybe you could you could you could write for an hour or two after work every day. There's just a lot more opened up to us. Now, uh, recently, uh, I want to ask you about uh, this late this latest work, uh, Hauntings, Piercing the Darkness. So uh, tell everybody about that. 
Um, well, that's that's my love right now. I, I, Hauntings yeah. is a series that I came up with um, earlier this year. Uh, started toying with the idea of, of doing this series. Um, it is about a guy named Ezra Labar, who is a uh, uh, descendant of a Jesuit priest, and he's a uh, exorcist. He, you know, went through uh, seminary school and mm-hmm. studied at the Vatican, and was um, it was not exiled. His father was exiled, but he actually left the church. And he's kind of a rogue um, exorcist, if you will. He's a demon hunter, and uh, so hauntings are the chronicles of his 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 chase of these this darkness that he chases. Um, it's piercing the darkness is the first in the series. Um, it's set in South Carolina. It is set, uh, on the coastal region. Um, it is, um, very interesting story. The the whole series, if you look at it, every story, um, is actually inspired by true events because what I've done is gone and, and found these other true event stories, uh, that date back as far as the 16 and 1700s. And I have, you know, taking creative liberty with, you know, bringing them to life uh, in this haunting series. And uh, this particular uh, uh, story, Piercing the Darkness, um, came out in September. And uh, right. it was within, I don't know, eight hours on the bestseller list and uh, has been on and off the bestseller list for the last four months. So well, this is its fourth month. So, And, and, and so... Uh, and then you fall in Seeds of Nightmares. Uh, is the, the follow up to that? Well, no, there was there was actually another book. Was there, was a, yeah. there was a there was a there was a electronic only book called Hauntings Interview with the Exorcist, and basically it's a transcript of an interview with Ezra Labar after the case. Okay. There's one of those wow. after each book. Very short read, but it gives the reader a chance to get inside the mind of the character. And then um, the one that you mentioned, the um, the anthology, uh, Simply Horror, Seeds of Nightmares, uh, followed that up. Um, it is the anthology that uh, The Kiss comes from. It's uh, published in that. And then the second of the Haunting series comes out, uh, hopefully next week we'll see it coming out. Hauntings, oh. Hauntings 2, uh, Witches of Essex. Uh, it is set in uh, Danvers, Massachusetts, which is Old Salem Village. And right. it's a very uh, interesting story. If uh, you have any interest in the uh, the Salem witch trials, of course. I mean, I, who, who could seriously say? I want to hear somebody seriously say, "No, no, no, no. I'm not interested in that subject at all." That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So now, uh, you and I both have a a mutual background with Stellium Books. Uh, of course, that's you know owned and operated by Net Munich. So uh, let's talk about that because I want to you know you know she 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 runs a small publishing company and I want to give her her props because as a writer and as kind of a media type guy, she's been really she's been a great friend, but she's been really good to me and all of my efforts. And I just wanted you to get your get your thoughts out on that. Oh, I absolutely agree. I mean, when when we first met, uh, I mean, I liked her immediately as a person, and then we talked about, you know, the the publications and and all, and uh, or, or my book, you know, ideas, and and uh, it was one of those things where you you just trust somebody immediately, you know, yeah. And um, and she's been good, you know. I, I think the thing I like about her the best is that she. Um, she will offer her opinion and she actually ask about it. She's like, can I give you my opinion? And I'm like, always, you know, I mean, you can give me your opinion. Doesn't mean I'm going <laughs> to take it to heart. Oh yeah. And but she's uh, not, she doesn't, she doesn't soft. No, pedal. she doesn't soft pedal. She tells you what she thinks. And, but the thing I like about Annette is that she knows me. Um, she's, she's read my writing. Um, she knows that I'm very edgy, that I push the envelope on a lot of stuff. Um, and, and she will question it, but she, always goes with me you know she always says okay this is your style i'm i'm gonna go with it and um and she cares i think she cares about uh you know her writers oh there's no doubt about it i mean you know like you i've had a million conversations with her about this and um 
she's really you know i i first worked with her on radio we were working at a at a on a radio network and that's how i met her but over over the years it's just come down to writing uh and uh she is she's probably she's one of the first people uh to be openly receptive to my writing and i just said well she gets it she understands so i just wanted to say a few words uh in regards to her and what she's doing uh, because you know she's she's small, but she she operates big, and uh, I'm glad to be affiliated with her. So you know, James, you know, what are you doing next? I mean, what's coming up for you? What are you what are you working on? Well, I've got the um, the Hauntings two, which is I'm I'm wrapping up right now, and and like All I right. said, hopefully this thing will be out next week. Um, I've got. Um, Hauntings 3 will be coming up after that. It's another interesting story that's actually set in Bolivia. And um, so Ezra Labar and his crew will be headed to Bolivia. Um, In in between, this will shock you. (laughs) Okay. In between uh, Hauntings 2 and Hauntings 3, I'm working on a romance novel. And um, (laughs) and I I said, I, I swear, I swear I am. And um, and uh, I think it's going to be good. Now it's it's tragic romance, but I mean, okay. what romance? What romance isn't tragic? And uh, All right. yeah. and um, it's uh, it's kind of a Bridges of Madison County type of story. Okay. And, uh, so I think that people will like it. But uh, I'm I'm excited. now what now what now what led you to this? Now that's what that's what I'm curious about. I mean, is this like some kind of like. Uh, uh, well, you know, what thing you always wanted to do or what, what, what is this about? Well, honestly, what led me to it was um, writing the poetry. You know, I started writing poetry oh, and then, nice. and then I, I found that there were some there were some romantic elements in the stuff that I was writing and 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 the uh, people I was writing for. And and, uh, you know, it's uh, and I keep. You know, people keep saying, oh, you need to write a romance novel. You need to write a romance novel. I'm like, ah, you know, I don't think I could do that. You know, honestly, years ago, I actually wrote a tragic romance. It's sitting in my desk drawer right now that I never did anything with. And um, but it's it's terrible. But uh, (laughs) but but this was something that just kind of came about. I said, you know, I think I think I could do that. I think I think I could do that. And um, not that um, not that sales is motivation for anything. But I spend a great deal of time, as you know, I think the first time you interviewed me, I was on the beach. And uh, so I, I spend a great deal of time at the beach. And um, I look down the beach and I see thousands of ladies with their iPads and Kindles on their laps or books in their laps. And I'm thinking, why not, why not me? Why don't I write a romance novel and let that be mine that there all these thousands of people are reading on this beach? And so, uh, you know, after writing the poetry and stuff, I was like, you know, I think I could do this. I think I could write this. So it's kind of a self-challenge, if you will. Well, I think, but you know what, I, there's nothing wrong with having a practical approach, you know, talking about, you know, you see all these women with their books and their iPads and, you know, th- there's nothing wrong. Let me tell you something. This is one of my favorite things. John Lennon said, art that you can't sell is bullshit. Yeah, that's right. And that's somebody who would know, right? Yeah. I... And so there's 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 nothing wrong with saying, you know what? Um, this is a fairly, this is a commercially viable genre, which I think romance even still is, right? As far as I know. Um, and uh, if you can write a good romance story. And get a lot of people buying it and uploading it. I would say, hey, write a good romance story. Well, uh, it's this is a good story. I, I really like this story. It's uh, it's set in New York. Um, it's set on Lake George. As a matter of fact, it's called the Lake. And uh, I think uh, I think people are going to like it. People that like that kind of story are going to like this story. Good, very good. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, this is one of those. This is an atypical edition of the nightfall radio show uh we've been talking with the author james baxter uh and 
what we're doing is, you know, this is almost like a trailer. This is almost like a teaser, a preview, because his short story, The Kiss, will be our feature story uh, next week on the show. And I wanted to bring him on and introduce him to you and to kind of set the table for what you can expect. It's a it's a wonderful story. It's a it's a story which is perfectly uh, fitted to the Nightfall radio show because it's to the far side of horrific. And I know that you're going to enjoy it. James, uh, thank you for being on the show. I want you to hang on the line for just a few minutes uh, after we sign off so we can talk. Uh, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, again, uh, James Baxter, author extraordinaire, please do not miss the show next week. It's called The Kiss You can uh, hear the show on the Blackwater Media YouTube channel. You can hear the show on the Blackwater Media Facebook page. You can hear the show on Google+. So you have plenty of avenues and ways to listen. Uh, And, of course, it can be downloaded uh, in the MP3 format for you to archive uh, for yourself. So until next week, thank you guys for listening. And I will see you at nightfall.